Hello and welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, I thought we'd cover maybe the QuickBooks interface. Um, does it work with both invoicing and AR? Absolutely. We have two versions of the QuickBooks mm -hmm. interface. They work a little bit different, but okay. there are some things that are the same. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what's the same. Okay. Um, in both versions of the interfaces, you have to link your customers, your vendors, and your GL codes from QuickBooks to Enterprise. Mm -hmm. So in both versions, we have functions that will do a get customers, a get vendors, and a get GL codes. Okay. Now what that can do, if you uh, have a blank database, when you do get customers, get vendors, get GL codes, it will mm -hmm. import the, the customers, vendors, and GL codes from QuickBooks into Enterprise. If you have an existing database with existing customers, vendors, and GL codes, it will match them and link them. Okay. Okay, and we'll take a look at how that works. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, can we start maybe with the AR? Sure, oh, that'd AR be great. Version. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to open up uh, the QuickBooks interface. And the first thing I'm going to do um, in this interface is just explain the different things that you can do, the different, uh, as we call them, transfer types. So I'm going to click on this drop down and just kind of go over each of these types. So with this interface, you'll be able to send AR transactions, and that would be all AR transactions, an invoice, a credit, a debit, um, a payment. And we're going to take a look at how those go over to QuickBooks in a few minutes. You can get your general ledger codes, which will bring your codes from QuickBooks into Enterprise. You can get your new customers only, so if in time as you're working with um, as you're working with QuickBooks and Enterprise, you over, over time are going to continually add new customers to your database. Right. Um, rather than have to add them in both places, what we would recommend that you do is add them in QuickBooks and then use the get new customers to bring them into Enterprise. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Then you don't have to put them in both places because you'd still have to do that get new customers to link them together. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to kind of use QuickBooks to keep to update everything and then just bring it into Enterprise. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, we also have a get customers to bring all the customers over. Um, send purchase orders. We'll send purchase order receipts over to QuickBooks and create a purchase order in QuickBooks. Get suppliers. We'll get your suppliers. And then we also have a get new suppliers only, which does very similar things as the get customer, just bringing the new suppliers right. over. Okay. Okay. Um, now, as far as send the transactions, what type of, you mentioned that it's, it's each of the individual transactions, but how are we going to see that in QuickBooks? How is it displayed? Okay. Um, with the AR um, interface, mm -hmm. what it will do is, for example, if you create an invoice in Enterprise, um, you're going to maintain all of your AR functions within Enterprise. You're basically mm -hmm. going to be managing AR in Enterprise. Okay. So you'll be creating invoices. When payments come in, you'll be creating payments against those inter uh, mm -hmm. invoices and you may have credit and debit journals or a credit note right. attached to an invoice. All of those transactions will go over to QuickBooks but they'll go over as journal entries mm -hmm. over in QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, not as an actual invoice or an actual payment in QuickBooks. Okay. You'll be able to see those transactions under the customer account mm -hmm. um, because they will be tied to the customer okay. but um, they will be just journal entries to your general ledger. Okay. Okay. All right. And what about the stuff that comes in from that you we get, like the get customers, get GL codes? Yeah, let's take a look at that first. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll take a look at what the customer, vendor, and GL code looks like over in QuickBooks, and then we'll take a look at what that looks like over in Enterprise, and then we can get into what the transactions look like. Okay, okay? sure. All right, so I'm going to close out of here for a minute, and I'm going to open up my QuickBooks database. Now I'm using a sample database that QuickBooks provides. So let's first take a look at the customer. So I'm going to click on the customer, and I have a customer set up called EPMS QuickBooks Test Company. I'm going to edit that customer, um, and you'll see that I have a company name. I have a contact information that I've entered here as well. I've put in a bill to address, and I've also put in a ship to address that's slightly different. Now, the ship to address will not come over in... Um, into enterprise, just the bill to address. Okay. Okay. Sure. You don't have a sold to and a bill to over in QuickBooks like mm -hmm. you do in enterprise. So we bring that bill to address over in both places. Okay. Okay. One key important piece of information um, is under the payment tab. There's an account number here. You don't have to put an account number here on the QuickBooks side. QuickBooks mm -hmm. does not require it. Right. If you don't put an account number we have to have one over in Enterprise. Mm -hmm. So what ends up coming over is a, a lengthy 
what they call the QuickBooks list ID. It's a lengthy number. Right. Um, unless if you've got the customer already set up in enterprise and you've got an account in enterprise, it'll try to link it by the company name. But if you call the company Acme Inc. in QuickBooks and in enterprise it's Acme Inc. period, it's going right, to treat it as two complete different customers. Okay, makes okay. sense. So we recommend that you use the customer account over in QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. That um, will really help eliminate duplicate entries. Okay. Okay. Sure. And also you'll see under the additional information tab, you have things like terms codes and the sales rep and the tax item. And those, that information will also come over to QuickBooks. So let's take a look at the vendor. If I click on the vendors, I have a vendor set up uh, called EPMS Vendor. And kind of a similar thing where you have a vendor name. You have the address information here. I have a contact entered here. And I, again, I have an account number under the supplier. Same mm -hmm. thing here. You want to use the account number, otherwise it's going to try to match the company name. And if it doesn't find a match, it's going to bring in the company. QB list ID. Yeah, with that big yeah. long QB list ID. Okay. Okay. And the last thing we'll look at is the general ledger code. Now the general ledger accounts will come over with the actual account number you have here. QuickBooks again doesn't require an account number, but mm -hmm. we do. So um, only accounts that have account numbers will come over. So you, that's important that you set them up in QuickBooks with account numbers. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So let's uh, minimize QuickBooks. Let's take a look at Enterprise. So I'm going to go into File Maintenance. And let's start with the customers. And I'm going to find that customer, my EPMS QuickBook customer. And it brought over the sold to address, which was the bill to address over in QuickBooks. It brought over my phone number and email and contact information from the contact over in QuickBooks. It did bring in a credit limit that I had set over in QuickBooks. And it brought some defaults like the sales rep code, the terms code, and the tax jurisdiction. And then over in the bill to, it put that same bill to address from QuickBooks into the bill to address from mm -hmm. Enterprise. But again, it's the same address in the sold to and bill to. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now let's take a look at the vendor. So let me search on my EPMS vendor. Here's my vendor. And kind of similar information. I have my ID and name, my address information, my contact information, and it brought over the terms code that I had set on the vendor. And the last item we'll look at are the GL accounts. And again, it brought over uh, all of the pertinent GL accounts. It'll bring over the income and asset accounts, it'll bring over the, or the sales accounts basically, mm -hmm. it'll bring over the expense accounts and the bank accounts. Okay. Okay? That makes sense. Um, all right, so you mentioned maybe we can look at what, how the information gets to QuickBooks. Like what, what information can we, how can we see it on the QuickBooks side, you know, transaction-wise? Okay, and we can take a look at both because that's where the AR interface and the invoicing mm -hmm. interface really differs. Okay. So let's take a look at the AR side first. Mm -hmm. We'll look at all the transactions and then we'll go over to invoicing. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, open up my AR module. And I'm going to go over to the Transactions tab. And I do have some transactions here that I have sent over to QuickBooks already. Um, let's take a look at these. I have an invoice here, 405587. I have a receipt, and I have a debit and a credit journal. And you'll notice this transfer flag says true. This means they've been transferred to QuickBooks. I also have an invoice here that has nothing in that field. So this one's ready to go over to QuickBooks. Okay. So let's send this invoice over to QuickBooks, and mm -hmm. then we'll go over to the QuickBooks uh, company company and take a look at these transactions. Okay. Okay. All of these transactions are under my EPMS uh, QB customer. So now I've got a transaction ready to go. Now these, it, it's only going to send posted transactions that are not voided, that have that transfer flag not set to true. Once it transfers them, it'll set that flag to true. So with the QuickBooks interface open, I have my send AR transactions transfer type selected and I hit proceed. It asks me, am I sure I want to do this? And I'm going to say yes. And at this point, it's going to transfer every transaction, whether it be a credit, debit, receipt, um, invoice that's not been transferred and, but has been posted over okay. to QuickBooks. All right. Okay. So that's been successful. So let me open up QuickBooks. And I'm going to go into that customer. And here are the transactions. You'll see that first invoice I had sent. This one was my 
The second transaction was a payment. Here's a credit and debit journal. And then here's the invoice I just tra transferred. And you'll see these all came over as general journal entries, not as invoices. In each one, if I edit it, it will have posted to the particular credits and debits to the particular GL accounts that were set up in that invoice. Okay. Or that transaction. Okay. So rule of thumb then is you really have to do everything AR-wise in enterprise. Correct. If you're going to use the AR version of the QuickBooks. Correct. You're going to manage your customers' accounts, the statements, um, and all the activity over in, in enterprise. Right. But you want to update your general ledger. Okay. Over Makes in QuickBooks. sense. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to close out of here. So now let's take a look at the invoicing side. So before I do that. I do have to, because it's actually two different um, uh, excuse me, interfaces, I'm going to install the invoicing one quickly here. Okay, now I'm going to reopen Enterprise, and I'm going to change my module registration so I'm using invoicing. Okay, I'm going to open up the invoicing module. And again, this works similar in that um, there's a transfer flag. And this will be set to X if it's ready to transfer, mm -hmm. and it will be blanked out if it's not. So there's a little bit of a difference in the way, in the, way the flag works. Right. But um, the, whenever you post an invoice over in um, Enterprise, it will put an X on that saying it's ready to transfer, and then remove it when it's um, finished. Okay. okay. So I have an invoice. I'm ready to post, so I'm going to go up to Action and post the invoice. Look at my posted invoice. You'll see it's ready to go. Now let's open up the QuickBooks interface. Now I'm just going to take a minute here to talk about the choices that we have here because they're slightly different. There's a couple extra choices you have with regards to customers and vendors um, that you didn't have over in the AR side. Okay. And now you'll see in, in this side it says Send Invoices because that's all there is. There's, we don't do receipts. You don't do debits and credits and invoices, right, right, right. Just, in, just for invoices. Sure. Okay? Okay. So we have our send invoices. We have, just as we had over in the AR module, we have send purchase orders. We can get new customers or new suppliers. You can get all customers or all suppliers. You have two more choices with the customers over here. You can do a get customers where it's only going to update the bill to, or you can get customers where it's only going to update the sold to. As I said earlier, it updates both on the AR side. Right. Um, here it will too, if, unless you choose one of the options that says just to update one or the other. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right, so let's send an invoice, send the invoice that we just posted and take a look at how that looks over in QuickBooks. So I'm going to hit proceed. The invoice transferred. And now let's open up QuickBooks and go to the customer. And here's my invoice. See, now it's not a journal entry, it's an actual invoice. I can open it up. And it looks like an invoice in Enterprise with the line item coming over from QuickBooks along with the tax information. And then I can from here manage it as I would any other invoice in QuickBooks. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're using the invoicing one. They would do the receipts right in QuickBooks like they normally would. Correct. So there's right. a big difference, right? Okay. The last thing we have to look at is purchase orders. And this works the same whether you're in AR or whether you're in um, invoicing. Because okay. you're, what you're sending over on the purchase order side is once a purchase order has been received, um, and you have an invoice for that purchase order, you're going to send that information over to QuickBooks to create the uh, AP invoice. Okay. okay. So let me minimize this for a minute, and we're going to go into purchasing for a minute. I'm just going to show you what was set up over in the purchasing side. So I have a purchase order here that has been received, and when I received it, I entered in the invoice number from my vendor, and Obviously, the GL code has to be set here so that when you send it to QuickBooks, it knows what GL account to post that to. Right. Okay. Okay. So as long as the invoice number and GL account are filled in here, and this purchase order has been posted, it'll be marked with a no here, as it, meaning it has not been transferred yet, and then it can be transferred over to QuickBooks. Okay. okay? So let's just take a quick look at that over in QuickBooks. Sure. So now I'm going to close out of my customers and go into the vendors and find my enterprise vendor. Here's my EPMS vendor. And here's the receipt. 987654 was the receipt number or the uh, invoice number I entered on the receipt. 
and it actually creates a, an AP invoice over here on, mm -hmm. on the QuickBooks side. And if I had multiple receipts with the same invoice number, it would create one invoice with multiple line items over in QuickBooks. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I think that explains it pretty well. Great. Well, thank okay. you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.